after the Times, um, I went to work at Adweek and worked there for a little bit, then worked at uh, Working Woman magazine, where I was the cover editor, uh, business cover editor, and the only boy who was working there at the time. And after that, I worked for a newsletter uh, called Bottom Line, where I was the editor for about uh, eight years, at which point uh, the internet was coming about. Uh, a Greenwich financial firm recruited me to work on a dot com, which uh, did very well until the crash um, in 2001, early 2001. Uh, and then I started my own business, started my own you know, work, uh, started as a marketer, really, and wrote for all the major real estate companies in New York. I wrote the 1973 tax law book for Ernst & Young. Uh, so I was I, my, my specialty for all of these corporations was I would come in, take really complex stuff and make it easy for anybody on the street to understand it, um, which is why I was brought in by Wiley to do the um, Ernst & Young book. That book did pretty well, um, uh, but little by little, you know, I befriended Terry Teachout. Um, I did a piece with him uh, when I was editing that newsletter on, you know, I think it was favorite soundtrack albums. I can't remember what the jazz subject was, but anyway, we did that piece and then we both realized we had a passion for jazz. And this is like about 1996. Uh, we both started getting together on Saturday mornings from about 10 till noon, 12, 1230. And for a period of about 10 years, we went over to each other's houses and listened to music once a quarter. Um, and we listened to jazz. I would bring CDs to his place. He'd bring CDs to my place. Of course, this is, this is pre-workaholic Terry. Uh, he was busy. I mean, don't, don't, get, don't get me wrong. He was an inspiration and a role model for me. Um, but it, he wasn't the drama critic yet. He wasn't uh, at the Wall Street Journal. He wasn't writing another column for the Wall Street Journal. I mean, he, that was just getting started when we start when we, you know, midway through our relationship. And, you know, we just, you know, there came a point in 2007 where he turned to me and he said, you've got to start a blog. And I said, Terry, I'm too busy, man. I, I, you know, I'm working for corporate. Every real estate comp company in this city, corporation, is having me come in and interview their CEO for newsletters. I said, I, my schedule is nuts. He said, I'm busy. You're not busier than me. There's no way that that's, you know, you're not busier than I am. So you've got to start a blog. He said, you know too much. You know too much. You, you know, you've got you've to start blogging. So um, I said, all right. He goes, no, seriously. I said, fine. I said, in two weeks, I will be blogging. In two weeks, I will have a name for the blog and I will start the blog. He goes, good. He goes, I blog, it's important. You have to blog too. Terry always secretly knew that I was a misfit and misplaced as a corporate financial writer. And he could sense that my passion, you know, where my passion was lay in music. Um, at which point I came up with, with the name Jazz Wax, Wax being um, sort of a triple entendre that it was sort of this name, this word that the publications like Variety used in the 1940s when they were they needed a short word for records. They would say Detroit Waxer to release, you know, 45 on so and so. But um, the word wax was used a lot there. Also, to wax, you know, is to go is to expound, and also wax is to grow. So I figured jazz wax would, would sort of do the trick and fortunately it was available. And in um, August 3rd, 2007, I posted, I put up my first post and haven't stopped since.